That's Canadian Border Patrol watching my YouTube channel. And this is me, hoping with everything I've got that they'll let me cross the border. Based on their questions, I can tell that they're concerned for my safety and they don't want a dead American on their hands. And these are all genuine concerns. A couple of days ago, I picked up this truck camper. This thing is a beast. And in this episode, I'll be driving to the edge of the world in order to push past the limit of what's ever been accomplished before. I can hear all the ice just crunching under the boat. By attempting a loop through Canada's unforgiving and very snowy Trans Labrador Highway, where moose are hell-bent on eating themselves into traffic, 14 feet of snowfall is average, and the temperatures can get down to negative 54 Fahrenheit. But hey, at least I won't have to deal with mosquitoes. If inadequately prepared or poor judgment is made, there's a real and significant possibility that I won't be returning home alive. No matter what, this trip is gonna be legendary. After an hour and a half of paperwork and questioning, an officer walked me outside to search my vehicle. Yeah, it's like, so I can basically sling the backpack around my shoulder and take the camera out. All right, we're good to go. I'm just gonna put all this back down and let the road. I think what was going on is it was a really weird time of year. It's February, it's cold, basically the coldest month of the year. Um, and they were wondering why I'm going on a road trip. There's really no tourism this time of year. In the end though, they wish me well, uh, wish me success with the YouTube channel. I've never had that happen before. You know, what more can you ask for? In my research of this trip, I can't find anyone who's successfully done it in the winter time. This lane, it looks like pavement to you or I, but it is just absolute ice. Literally, I can't stop the truck. It just wants to start sliding sideways. I'm gonna find a place to pull over for the night. I'm thinking that this is a taste of what's to come on this trip. There's our tracks coming in there. I went in a store called a Drug Mart across the parking lot here. It's kind of like a Walgreens in America, I guess. I found the most Canadian looking guy ever, but I also found Kraft Dinner. I've heard about this, and at first glance, it just looks like Kraft Mac and Cheese, but I guess it's a totally different thing here in Canada. So I figured we have to try it while we're snowed in. I also grabbed some root beers. This one's actually bottled in Vancouver. When I was walking across the parking lot, I also talked to the a plow truck driver. He was actually super nice, interested about the trip we're on. He said, no problem at all for us to be here. Alright, the top's coming back down. It's just way too windy out. Alright, now with lower ceilings. Let's see how it is. So this one is the sharp cheddar. So I don't know if that's influencing it, but it's definitely a little bit different than the normal Kraft mac and cheese. Still kind of tastes just like a 99 cent box of mac and cheese though. I just remember the root beer. Oh man, I hope these are twist offs. No, they're not. A bottle opener or something in the truck. Man. I want it bad enough. Let's go. It's all right. I feel like this whole meal is kind of all right. Nova Scotia. 
overnight this area just entered a state of emergency they got 150 centimeters of snow which is about five feet and the wind gusts are about 80 mile or uh, 80 kilometers an hour which is about 50 miles per hour i'm so used to saying everything in miles per hour i also converted my truck over to kilometers an hour so i'll do my best that car looks abandoned on the side of the road The driver is still in that truck. It looks like he's been in there all night. I think there's a semi truck up ahead that's blocking the road. There's basically a huge hill right here that you can't see. This storm is getting definitely, the storm is definitely getting worse. Looks like they just couldn't make it up the hill. Probably too much ice. So, I don't know if they're gonna have to wait for a plow probably to like salt and sand the road here and then hopefully they can make it up. At this point, the snow banks are taller than the doors on the truck. All right, no diesel at this gas station. Just look at how much snow that is, guys. All of these semi trucks are all stuck in here. There's the Tim Hortons drive through well, thankfully we're fine. We still have three quarters of a tank of diesel. Um, so, we'll just keep going. This is pretty in here. Wow. Look at that. There's a big ship over there. The Paul E. Martin. The Canzo Canal. We're going to be running out of pavement soon, so we'll have to take a ferry across the ocean from Cape Breton to Newfoundland. I think that's actually the ferry off there in the distance. Alright, so I just looked up. It looks like the ferry is cancelled for today. All these trucks are in line for the ferry. Um, just parked. So I think what we're going to try to do is figure out how to get through here and we're just going to spend the night. All right, let's go see what's going on. By the way, these are like the biggest snow banks I've ever seen in my life. There was a car that was parked there last night. Look at that. I mean, the snow bank goes halfway up the building. Hi, um, I'm looking to they say take my vehicle across. But there's no boat today. So okay. I don't know that you still want to do that. Oh, uh, I'm on a road trip, so even tomorrow is fine. No one can come to work, so no work can get done. <laughs> I believe it, yeah, it's crazy out there. <laughs> Online is your best bet. I booked a ticket for tomorrow morning. Fingers crossed it doesn't get canceled. They said we're totally fine just being parked here and we can explore the town, they said. The guy working there said that the power's been going off and on in town here all day so not much may be open look at this wow i'm gonna go ahead and say they're not open i'm gonna guess the gas station's not open either So it's a pretty small town. This is downtown right here. So we've got a subway. That's not open. Snow banks. Just massive. Bumped into a guy from the Philippines. He said that he's lived here in North Sydney for about four years and he's never seen anything like this. What's crazy is that all of this snow dumped overnight and it's wet, heavy snow that's like concrete to shovel. There's literally no way for me to help since it requires heavy machinery to move. It's just like 
the road right over there. I can definitely see why they did the state of emergency. Makes sense. You can see where the handle normally is. All that snow. That's the Atlantic Ocean right over there. So I'm sure that all these businesses really got swept a lot of wind. Probably really piled up the snow. This is probably a good time to talk about risk and risk mitigation. Because on this trip, as you're seeing, there are definitely real risks. Like not even a grocery store being open to get food. While this is a relatively safe and easy route to do during the summer, the northern half of this trip, it's definitely possible that we're gonna get stranded. But we are prepared. In the camper and truck, I have 10 days worth of food, water, and propane. For survival, I brought along down sleeping bags, multiple blankets, so I can hunker down for days if needed. In addition to survival gear and the knowledge how to use it, I also brought along a bunch of fun toys. I brought my skis, snowshoes, that way we're ready to slay no matter what this wintry beast brings our way. I'm back where we were yesterday for the ferry. Looks like the line is still really long, but hopefully that means it's not canceled. Well guys, we are doing it. We are going from Nova Scotia over to Newfoundland. The province of Newfoundland Labrador consists of several regions. The island of Newfoundland, this is where most of the people live, and it contains several subregions: Western, which is where we're heading now, Central, Eastern, and Avalon, which is where most of the population is. And then there's the continental region of Labrador, also known as the Big Land, which is mostly untamed and extremely remote, and where we're going to be spending most of our time. I'm excited. Look at that, we can actually see him loading up right over there. In some previous episodes, we've done some ferries out in the Great Lakes, but these are more like cruise ships. They're huge. So they actually have like little hotels on these boats and I ended up booking a room. I've been on this trip for about 10 days now. First half, I was sleeping on the back seat of the, in the cab here and um, now obviously in the truck camper. So I think it'll be a nice time to just kind of like take a shower, maybe wash some clothes. Hello. Good. Take your boarding card. You're gonna go right around the ramp there to the bottom deck, okay boss? Okay. okay this is like a legit ship. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at these huge hydraulics. Oh my gosh. This might be the coolest thing ever. All right, let's go explore. We want to go up to the nine uh, eighth. There's the galley. Movie theater style seats. It's actually pretty nice. This is about a six to eight hour cruise over. Um, wow, that's a big lifeboat. This is the sun deck. Let's see if it's open. Stairs up to the very top. We've got to do this. You know it's a good sign when they've got barf bags ready. <laughs> Hopefully we don't need them. We are literally crossing the Atlantic right now. This is amazing. There's a little boat out there. This almost feels like unlocking a new map on a video game.
What was that? This is for growth? This is for growth? That should go there. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Let's set it down. Thanks. Sure. I did the same thing here. Oh, yeah. The whole boat is just moving. This is. I can see now why there's bark bags everywhere. This is us. Wow. This is interesting. It's kind of like a wet bath situation, I guess. All right. Toilet, shower. The door keeps moving like this, and then the shower curtain is like moving around. Even the water in the toilet bowl just like is swirling. Let's enjoy some shower power. Oh, that's hot. That's really hot. Oh my gosh. The entire room is wet. That fuzz is not even mine. They are never gonna let me do ship content ever again. This is awful. With all the motion, it well, was going over, yeah. So we don't have a, we were just wondering if we had a shot that? Everything is moving and vibrating and rattling. Oh, I didn't think I was gonna get seasick, but I feel really nauseous. Everything's moving. Out that window, you can see the horizon moving as the boat rocks. Never felt this way on a boat before. So that ended up being about a six hour cruise across. Definitely got really sick there though. Um, I'd do it again, but oh golly, that was not good. Could have been worse though. I didn't throw up. Have a good day. Gosh, it was all pitch black last night when I came in, so I couldn't see a thing. Well, I've got to say, everyone here has been super nice. I wasn't actually expecting a totally different accent, so that's very interesting. Although, I suppose since I'm the one here, I'm actually the one with the accent. Absolutely breathtaking. Oh my gosh. I would get my drone out, but I'm not sure it gets any more beautiful than this. So back in Nova Scotia at the ferry terminal, I don't know if you guys noticed the two clocks behind the counter. So it's like a really interesting fun fact about Newfoundland Labrador is that it's actually a 30 minute offset from the next time zone over. And it's actually the only time zone in all of the Americas that has a 30 minute offset. Like right now it's 10 o'clock here in New York, it'd be an hour and a half earlier so what would that be like 8 30. my mind like somehow is just so used to working in hour offsets i imagine that it would make it really difficult for like scheduling meetings like zoom calls and stuff across the country i don't know if this is going to show up for you guys or not but it's like the air is just full of this glitter i think it's a little bit foggy out that's frozen and it's just suspended in the air we've got these mountains over on this side the sea over here and then occasionally pass through little fishing villages. It's breathtaking. And I can just smell the wood burning stoves every single time I pass through one of these towns. If someone in one of these towns wants to have me for a while, I will help keep the fire going. Oh wow, there's a lot of ice. This ship is the kayak, named after the Inuit word for kayak. I'm told by the crew that ice has moved into the Strait of Bell, which is where we need to cross, and it's currently under a warning. Although they seem confident that we'll be able to bust our way through the ice in the morning. I just booked the tickets. We'll be crossing here tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. We gotta check in at the ticket office at seven. So other than that, the night is ours. The battery has not been charging all day today. It's currently at 91% of a charge. Um, basically just didn't recharge after last night. What I'm thinking is that the lithium batteries might be too cold they're supposed to have heaters on them and work much much colder than freezing i'm trying to find my screwdriver so that i can take the little uh so i can open that hatch up and really get some air moving in there 
but unfortunately my screwdriver is not where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna keep looking for it. Um, hopefully though, we can heat these up. After this, it's complete remoteness. There's gonna be nothing open, especially in the winter time. Basically it's this or bust. We gotta get this working. I just remembered where it is. I had it right up in that hatch. Sorry for all the noise right now. The furnace is really kicking. All right guys, I think I found the problem. This is a vented battery compartment. Lithium batteries don't need to be vented. Basically, we're just gonna put these grocery bags down in there, block the vents. There we go. The heat's been on for about 30 to 45 minutes now. Battery is drained down to 91% now. Start the truck. Mm. No charging yet. There we go. 23, so it's charging now. Crisis averted. That's a pretty nice view. Ferry's right over there. We got a root beer chilling on the bumper. For dinner tonight, I had to use up some ingredients. So we've got BLT. Cheers to the next leg of our adventure tomorrow. Okay. Hey, Indy, wind down to the dock now, please. All right, thank you. Hello. You go behind the truck and trip. All right. Have a great morning. Thank you, you as well. Everyone here is like legit so nice. All right, all aboard the kayak. One more room? Oh, that was a close one. <laughs> oh, nice and warm in here. We're moving. Just going right through the ice. Little lighthouse over there. This ice is really thick too. Like, it's gotta be a foot thick in some places, like over here. That is definitely my truck honking right now. Poor thing, all scared of the boat ride. We are on our way to Labrador. Yeah, you as well, have fun. I met this fellow adventurer from Newfoundland. It's possible we might meet up for a future adventure. See you later, man. God's sake. Welcome to the big land, guys. We have made it. There is not much here. Our new friend on the boat mentioned that polar bears do come down this far south. We'll have to kind of keep our eye open for one. It'd be cool to see one, but also kind of frightening. Well guys, I think this is gonna be our beautiful campsite for the night. Super beautiful spot, perfect for the sunset. That is the Labrador Sea out there, which I think is part of the Atlantic, but don't quote me on it because I am really bad with my geography. Tonight is a top up, pajamas on kind of night. We are camping on the Labrador Sea. How neat is that? I think I need to clean the counter off and we need to feast. Also, don't mind that light. It's got a ghost going on tonight too. I don't know why. I actually looked on a map. We are at the most northern point in the continental North America. Did I say northern? I meant eastern. Most eastern point continental North America that you can drive. So if you watched my last episodes, you will know that I do not have measuring cups, so I'm doing my best. There's a bunch of fisheries around here. If I kept my eye open for a place that we could buy some fish, but they're all closed. I don't know if it's like because they're not open for tourists. Maybe their boats are all stuck in the ice. I don't know. I've been putting all my garbage outside on this trip. But with polar bears on the prowl, I think I'm just going to keep the tuna fish cans in here with me tonight. We do not need a polar bear coming around and eating us. I think I added a little too much water to it. You know what makes it better every single time? A good old fashioned bumper brew. Well, good morning. We've got a little bit of snow this morning. 
absolutely beautiful. Well, today we're gonna to be following the coastline up to a little town called Cartwright. I just need one more moment to enjoy this view though. That does not get old. I love how so many things like this gazebo are just painted in very colorful colors. In contrast to all the snow and the rock, a little pop of color like that is really nice. That guy was friendly. He must have known I was camping at the end or something. He kind of did a, yeah, like strong. 410 kilometers to the next services. That's a lot. Yeah, they got diesel. Now that we filled up, 803 kilometers to empty. So we should be good to go. I just got out to go to the bathroom and the truck definitely smells like she's burning oil. Not what you want to be smelling. I don't know. There's no phone reception here, so I think we just gotta continue on. Um, I can even just smell it sitting here. Not what we want. I'm feeling good about things, I don't know. I feel like no matter what, this trip is gonna be legendary. Well guys, we made it to Cartwright Labrador. At this point, we are literally 50 miles closer to Greenland than we are the United States. It feels amazing to be here right now. I think I saw a little grocery store on the way here. So let's go check it out, see what we can find for lunch. The brand of this store is Northern, which is actually related to the original Hudson Bay trading post of old. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome to Country. Oh, thanks. You can tell I'm not from around here, huh? Pretty quiet here. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty quiet. Hey, not much on to go. It's pretty simple life. Quiet. I'm right. Scotty. Scotty. Nice, nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you yeah. too. You guys want to see what it's like to go inside the gas station here? Beautiful day out. You got a YouTube channel? I actually do, yeah. Nice. If you want to look it up, it's Scotty Finds Adventure. I am. <laughs> Are you all the way in? Uh, yeah, I've been doing videos on the way in and stuff. Um, basically went through the U.S. to Maine, Nova Scotia. Have a good one. Thanks. I've got my snacks and we are going to just keep on going. Man, I am such on a high right now. I can't believe it. Well, we have a little bit of a problem here. I had to brush the snow away from the lock. This is literally what it looks like right now. I can't turn the key. Oh, what are the chances I left it unlocked? Oh, nope. Got it. Oh, I was thinking I was gonna be sleeping in the truck. That is a very frozen door. One thing that's been on my mind today is a dump I came across. I was driving on a side road up a hill enjoying the views when, well, actually I first accidentally cut off a police car. Sorry about that. But then I came across a dump on the backside of the mountain. I know garbage has to go somewhere, it's possibly the most picturesque dump in the world. Was about to grab my own garbage to put there as well because that's where the garbage goes. But I couldn't actually bring myself to do it. Well, hopefully that wasn't too much of a downer there, but bon appetit. Good morning, guys. Check out this snow we got. While we wait for the windshield to thaw, I was thinking in the middle of the night about how basically the last town was about 120 miles back. The next town is about 120 miles forward and there's no houses in between along the road and nobody seems to use the road during the night. Like I didn't hear one car all night long. We were probably the only people within 120 miles all the way around. So just mind boggling to think of that in today's world. I actually really enjoyed it and I slept really well. This guy just showed up, so I think we're gonna have some smooth sailing today. 
there's a lot of hydroelectric up here. So we're actually gonna be seeing some of that, I think later, either late today or tomorrow, we should come across some of it. Which I'm actually kind of excited to see some of these huge dams that are here. Cool bridge. Hey, there's our first car that I've seen in a while. I haven't seen another human since the Blau guy. Hello. Oh, no way, that was awkward. Oh, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Oh, so. lovely. Yeah. It is hell. It's not fun. <laughs> okay, <laughs> something to look him. forward to. <laughs> the road's gonna be rough. Now, this town, Happy Goose Valley Bay, has one of the longest runways in the world. And back when the US was doing the space shuttle flights, it was basically a backup landing strip for the space shuttle. I'm pretty sure it's also the runway that was in that Fast and Furious movie that like lasted like half the movie. We're in the town of Northwest River now. This bridge right over here is actually fairly modern. It was built in 1980. But before that, in 1960, they had a cable car going across in order to connect this town to the rest of the road. And before that, it was just small boats. That is actually the remnants of the cable car. Imagine going across the river here with that. So there's the new bridge. There's the cable car. I think this might be the old um, trading station. Let's see if we can get around here. Yeah, there we are. Hudson Bay Company. Which, if you guys remember um, the other day when we stopped at that northern grocery store, that's basically a, the modern version of it. I would love to do a whole episode on the Hudson Bay Company in the future. I actually started researching into its history and everything, and it's absolutely fascinating. There's a lot of these shrines along the road. It's only a 30 kilometer access road in here but there's gotta be at least 20 shrines on the side of the road. So I asked our new friend who I met on the ferry if he knew anything about it. And he said that they all represent deaths along the road. Just yet another reminder of how dangerous these roads can be. We're not even halfway into February. So that's basically one death a week. That literally means that while I've been filming this video, there will have been a death. There's a car parked on the road up here. Let's make sure they're okay. Got like sticks. Oh, guns. Some wildlife or something? Huh? Oh, wildlife or something? Uh, we just shooting some birds. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> look, good luck. I was kind of thinking maybe it was a polar bear or something. I don't know. Well, this is a random little stop. Oh, wow. That is neat. Mm. Oh, that is so much better than that bottled water we've been drinking. So this is the road we've been going down. Here we go, here we go, here we go. No. Shoot. Guys, I think we're just gonna have to out and see if we can get somebody else to pull. I'll give you guys a better look at this. That is all ice under there. We are down here. So, we want to come up this way, but it just keeps sucking right into this ditch. And then as you can see, it's just hitting the bumper there. So there's no way to get out of that. I'm gonna hook up a tow rope and hope somebody comes along soon. That is the ice I was talking about. My side here, I'm just gonna put it right through the hitch receiver, put a pin in it. a no-go. <laughs> I hear a car coming. Two cars. Let's see if they'd 
see if they'll stop. You don't mind giving me a pull, do ya? Kind of wondering if you pull out that way, because that's just a ditch that I keep getting in. This is all oh, ice here. Oh. There we go. Well, thank you. That came right out. All right, we got her. Oh, he had a dog in there too. Super nice guy. I think. I forget what his vehicle said he was with, but some parks department or something or other. Not inconvenienced at all. And then he just, we just chatted for a sec out on the road. That was lucky. We have entered Quebec. I think we're going the right way. The last couple signs have like all been in French. No, not even like the English. And I don't know any. So this is probably gonna be really fun and really awkward. The last turn was a little confusing. I did manage to get a map, but it's all in French. So everybody wants to drive down the middle of the road, including myself, because once you get out to the side, the, like the sides of the road are really mushy. So like the semi trucks are going down the middle. I'm going down the middle and then I've got to get over. They go over a little bit, but the problem is, is that their trailer like still is right next to me the whole time. Oh dude, poor buddy didn't make the turn. By the way, he was all right, so we are continuing on. And there's like literally no way we can pull him out, so. It's just like an ice rink. So it's 11 degrees out and the batteries aren't charging again. So I just pulled over here, to try to charge them or get them warm enough to charge. I think what I wanna do is put this heated blanket down in there. Uh, I've been just kind of sleeping with some nights. So I've got the inverter plugged into the outlet here. Battery, let's turn on the heated blanket. I'm just gonna go all the way. Worst case scenario, we can burn more propane to heat that compartment, but I really don't wanna use more propane at this point if we don't have to, because I haven't been able to fill the tanks anywhere. Well, how about that for a campsite tonight? And a quick on reservoir. And then right in the middle is Rina Levesur Island with Mount Babel right there. Created by an ancient meteorite impact, this perspective doesn't do justice to the scale of this place. The reservoir is huge and visible from space. Super neat. So it's currently like 10 degrees outside. I'm already cold, but it's supposed to get down to like negative 15 tonight. Thankfully, the heated blanket was able to get the batteries heated up enough that they were able to charge at least partway. I don't think we got a full charge on them. This is definitely a keep the top down kind of night. That way we have as little airspace to heat as possible. All right, it's the middle of the night and we just ran out of propane. Well, I've got more, but I gotta switch the bottles, which means I gotta go outside. Oh. <sighs> Oh, it's so uncomfortable. Oh, just crank that. There's our water frozen. Like it doesn't. Oh, it's blowing hot. Good night again. Good morning, guys. If everything goes smoothly, this is our last day of the trip. I think I'm just gonna do a quick yogurt breakfast. There's one more ferry crossing from what I understand. That's basically gonna be the finish line for us. Okay, it's actually really cold now that I'm out here. Chocolate chip cookie. It's kind of French. Interesting texture. It's all right. So I noticed we got some damage going on. The license plate bracket is kind of barely hanging on. And then the rear mud flap is also barely hanging on. Wheel wells are very full of ice. Yeah, that's the spare tire. Hardly recognizable. I was reviewing some of the drone footage and I think one of the solar panels is also busted. See how that layer is popping up? I think we're gonna have a few warranty repairs after this, but we'll be fine for now. So let's go pay for our diesel and continue on. Bonjour. 
Looked like she was cooking some good stuff in there. Smelled delicious. There was a menu up on the wall, I just don't know what it was. If I needed lunch, I would have definitely inquired. Oh wow. Looks like we are in for a big drop off. This is basically the dam that's keeping all of that reservoir um, that we saw earlier filled up and then they're generating hydroelectric from it. I guess a huge reservoir needs a huge dam. Wow. I'm gonna walk back here so you guys can see the truck for scale. There. We're about a mile down the road from the dam and this is the first gas station I've seen on the strip with a squeegee. Yeah, look out those mirrors, nice and clean now. We have made it back to the ocean. It has been days since I've seen the ocean. We just follow the ocean until we get to the ferry. There is the ferry. Once we cross, we'll be the first on record to have completed this route in winter. This ferry better not sink. On this trip, I completed multiple other side quests which I'll link right over here. Next, I'm heading home. I'll be surprising my wife and cats for our first adventure in the camper as a family. It's gonna be pretty special. I'll put it right over here. Oh my gosh, over 3,000 miles, we did it. Let's keep pushing limits.